Hello and thank you for viewing this demonstrational video for the um, charity fundraising schedule. Uh, if you do have a charity and you need to be, uh, have, you need to have people or yourself in that matter um, raising money for the charity, this can be very, very useful. Let me show you how it works. As you scroll down, these are the uh, details that you would start with. Most of this will be blank when you receive this, this spreadsheet, but um, you can put in the start date. I put in 1st of January 2016. Whatever date you put in there, the end date will be a year later. The spreadsheets, uh, this particular spreadsheet is used for one year, but it will not expire. So once you've finished, what the idea is is to keep one of these blank, and every year you start a new one, just put the new date in, and let that uh, date obviously be valid for another year, and then carry on. And then when you get to the next year, pull out a blank one and use a new one again. You don't want to be using two, uh, more than one year on one spreadsheet. Um, I suppose you can if if you really want to, but uh, the the reports and such are based are based on a on a year. And the uh, as you'll see, you've got monthly targets for that year, so you really want to be using a new one each year. Um, your charity name should be in there. But you can put in individuals' names. So if you've got more than one collector, you can put in various collectors' names. Uh, obviously, creating a spreadsheet for each of them. Um, the default amount. If you have a default amount, i.e., if you're contacting client, uh, people asking them to donate, say maybe ten pounds, um, and that's your default amount, then put in the ten pound default. Um, you'll see why later on. <clears throat> but if you don't have a default amount, then you can just leave that blank. That's not a problem at all. Here you've got monthly targets. So each target you obviously want to put down, a, each month you want to put down a target. Those months are the months that are specified up, up at the top. So you can put a target down each month as to what you'd like that person to be raising each month. Um, if you don't use targets, leave them blank. That's fine. Um, uh, status options. There's already completed in there. You can't change that. You can change these ones. So you can edit these categories to be whatever you want them to be. Um, just bearing in mind that the, the idea is later on the person is going to actually select each each entry, each person that they're going to be asking for money, they're going to put them into one of these categories. So however you want to break then that whatever you want to name these down or name these as, you can name them as whatever you want in order to actually uh, best utilize the spreadsheet. But that's up to you. Now, if you do, if that's the setup process, once you've done that, if you're doing the setup process for someone else and you don't want them to be able to change this data, you can right click and say hide. I've left it unlocked on purpose. Once you've hidden that, you can go to review and you can say protect workbook. That will lock it so they cannot open up that tab. Um, if you do put a password in there, please remember that password. You cannot. Um, you cannot uh, uh, receive a notification reminding you of that password. You cannot retrie retrieve it. I can't retrieve it. So if you put a password in there, please make sure that you remember it. Um, if you do run into run into issues and you do forget it, obviously keep a version of this unlocked at all times so that you can actually uh, use the, use that one again should you lock uh, lock it and forget the information. Once you've done that setup, the schedule will be ready to use. Now, all of this data won't be in here. I've added that in, but th this is what you would effectively add in. All of these headings will be here. If we scroll across, we can see here are some different colors. These colors, you would be able to select these, uh, select any of your, your um, categories that you put in and have them highlighted in those colors below. So that's how that works. So in other words, if we change potential to actually unlikely, we want to come up in, in orange, then you can see unlikely comes up in orange. If we change it to potential, then potential comes up in orange. So whatever you highlight, whatever whichever ones you select here, they'll highlight below accordingly. Uh, let's just start from the beginning. These are all of the, this is all of the data. So you've got the company individual name, contact person, uh, landline number, mobile number, email address, and notes. In the notes, you can put in whatever you want. You can just put in there for argument's sake, don't call the person on a Wednesday, or person uh, really optimistic, or they need to chat with their dad, or whatever the case might be. So next time you phone them up, you've got some notes just reminding you what it is that you've spoken about. You can put anything in there that you like. 
Now, this is the part where you need to keep what you need to keep up to date, the screen part, the last contact date. So whenever you phone the, this person and you speak to them or whenever you email them or you get a reply or something, just change that date as being the last date that you've actually spoken to them and select the status that would best suit where they are. So are they a hot lead? Do they need a second follow-up? Are they a potential? Have they completed? So on and so forth. Select the one. Completed obviously means that, you've, that they've made a donation and all's done. Next, the value of the donation. Now, if you've selected a default, you can leave this blank. Leaving it blank will automatically take the default figure. So if I've said over here that it's £10 default, if you go to schedule and I leave it blank, that will take that value as £10. It won't show it there, but it's taking it on the report, which you'll see later on, as £10. So if you're using the default, you don't need to fill that in. If you do fill that in, whatever you fill in here, will override the default figure. So if you keep this up to date, if you've got the value of the donation and you, you put in the actual value, if you don't, if it's not like for argument's sake, this is a potential and I put a value in, this is just an estimate. Again, if you leave it blank, it'll take the default as the estimate. But if, you, if you've spoken to them and, you th and they're umming and eyeing and thinking about it and they've told you that if they do make a donation, they'll make a £200 donation, put the, put the most accurate estimate in there that you know um, that you that you think that they would the um, potential that they could be making. I'll show you in a second why that's important. But before we move on to that, here's the last section. This will automatically adjust. So what this is doing is it's showing you during the selected month, prior months, and the balance. How are you faring against your targets? So let's have a look here. The last one's on the sixth of May, so that's the current month. We haven't made any, we haven't got any money in the, on in May, so it's showing us that we're 80 pounds below budget this month. Overall, in prior months, we were actually are 150 pounds ahead, which means the balance between these two is 70 pounds. So we're still 70 pounds over budget. But let's just say, for argument's sake, we did a company 21, and we go here for person 21. We're not going to fill in this information now, but you can fill in their details. Uh, let's say on the 8th of May, they actually came in and made a donation. So it's completed. And let's say they made a donation of £50. So now it says we're actually £30 this month below budget because you've done 50 and we need to do 80. As you can see, when that was blank, it said 70 because it's taking that as £10 because that's the default. But let's say they make £50. Now we can actually see we're 120 ahead on budget. Previous months we were 150. This month we're 30 pounds below. <clears throat> so we've got a little bit of work to do if we want to be ahead this month. But actually we are still ahead in, in the grand scheme of things. Now at any stage, if you click on the report tab, this will automatically generate a, budget, a report based on the last day of the previous month. So this goes from January 2016 to December 2016. That's that's what this this spreadsheet's uh, capable of. But the report date is at the 30th of April 2016. So on the 30th of April 2016, there are the past months up to April. <coughs> it is showing you what you've done in May. But obviously, these ones here are the, are the past months. It's showing you that there has been something done in May. But actually, at the end of April, £520, 300 was raised, £320 was the target. We were £200 over budget. That was at the end of last month. However, the red ones are the ones are the budgets that, that have, have the targets, sorry, that have that have happened. The orange ones are the future targets that still have to happen. But we can see actually in May they've already made some money, but this report is as of the thirtieth of April. So it, so these figures have only taken up to the end of April into consideration. But you can see what you know what what's what's coming up, and then this is why we want to put estimate amounts in because if you scroll down, it shows you the potential. So it shows you all of the cat all of the other categories other than completed, and what type of value and number of those entries have you got from February, March, and April? So they can come on here and see actually hot leads. They've got some hot leads coming up. There are some potential from previous months, so those ones may still come in. So the person who's looking at this report can not only see what's actually happened, what's already happened in the future, what future ones they've already got in, but they can also see what potential there is 
that's still sitting on, on the horizon that could possibly come in. So this is quite a comprehensive report based on what's happened up until previous months. That's why it's important to keep these green ones here up to date because that's what forms your report and actually shows the person who's looking at the report, whether it be you or someone else, exactly what's going on. So I'm sure that you'll find that beneficial for your charity. Um, I do hope that uh, you, you'll find this useful. If you've got any, any concerns or if you'd like any changes made to it, please do contact us. Otherwise, um, yeah, take a look at the other products we've got in our store for charities. And uh, if you do decide to purchase this product, we wish you all the best with it. Thank you very much. Goodbye.